Hey, I'm Caleb with Maine's Wood Shop. Welcome to another edition of the Wood Species Basic series. It's been a hot minute since I've done a continuation on this series, and a lot of that was because of my moving into a new shop and stuff, but I'm ready to go, and just to reiterate, the point of this Wood Species Basic series is geared towards beginners, just to tell you about different species of wood and give you a rough idea of what it's like to work with those species, because as you move along, you're going to want to start working with other things aside from big box store pine. A lot of you have asked me to do maple and walnut. I'm going to do both of those, but today we're going to do walnut. If we take a look at walnut, walnut is a beloved domestic hardwood. Here in the U.S. it's a domestic hardwood. It is part of the holy trinity of woodworking hardwood, so I would put that at like walnut, cherry, and maple. You could throw white oak in there too, but it wouldn't be a trinity anymore. Those four woods right there comprise pretty much most of like fine woodworking unless you start diving into exotics and a couple other species, but those are the main ones that woodworkers really sink their teeth into. So let's take a look at what people are going to be using walnut for commercially, and then we'll talk about its availability and pricing, and then we can talk about how easy it is to work with, and then what you might want to make and what you might want to finish it with. So on a commercial scale with walnut, people are going to be using it for gun stocks. You'll get it a lot in gun stocks, especially curly figured walnut with really fancy grain. Uh, it's going to be used a lot in furniture, especially furniture. That is probably one of the main uses for walnut, is fine furniture, chairs, tables. I mean, how many thousands of epoxy river tables have you seen where the wood of choice was walnut? I myself used walnut and cherry to make my dining room table. And you're going to get a lot of walnut veneered items, as well as just specialty items, little novelty things and such. I've seen commercially walnut watches too, where the whole watch is made out of wood. And Walnut is a little bit controversial in that sense because I've used walnut to make jewelry before and that made a lot of people not very happy. But I see it being done on a commercial industrial scale too. I think the wood is fine, the dust is bad, the finish when dry will basically be a barrier between your skin and the wood, which let's talk about where you're going to find walnut its availability and its pricing. Where you are going to find walnut in your area probably depends greatly on where you live. I am aware that in California there are some big blue and orange box stores that do carry woods like walnut and maple and cherry. Mine here do not. The only hardwoods that my big box stores carry is red oak and poplar and that's it. I have to go to a specialty hardwood store that luckily is like three minutes away from my house to get any other hardwoods aside from those two woods. When I get walnut there, it is pretty expensive. It can be expensive. Price might go up or down depending on where you live. For me, it's almost $4 per board foot. So just to give you an idea, if I were to get a 3 quarter inch thick by 6 inch wide by let's say 8 foot board, that could cost me anywhere from 37 to 40 bucks for just the board. So you can imagine if you have a big furniture project where you're going to need a lot of those boards, the price is going to be pretty expensive. Now for me, spending $40 on a single board isn't that bad because the kind of projects I make tend to be smaller specialty items. Usually I can make several projects out of that single board, but that might not be the case for you if you're wanting to build tables or chairs or bed frames or something. We'll talk a little bit about how easy or difficult walnut is to work with once you actually get it in your shop. Typically the wood I work with is your standard, if you go into a hardwood store they're going to call it four quarter inch, that's the thickness, that's really about three quarters of an inch thick which is a very standard thickness of wood. This is what would be called eight quarter and I don't use this a lot since I just recently got a lathe. This stuff is really good. So the way walnut works, it can be a little difficult. It can be a little tricky to work with walnut. So I believe most of the woods I've mentioned in past videos up to this point have all been relatively easy to work with. They're not too fussy. So what we have here is some pretty straight grain walnut. There's not a lot of figure to it or anything. 
But one of the reasons people enjoy working with walnut so much is because you can get walnut that's very curly grain or wavy and it's got a lot of figure in it and that makes for a really pretty piece when you're done. However, because of that figure, I've had a difficult time working with walnut because I've had this thing happen when I'm cutting it that has happened with other woods, but it's happened to me the most when I've used walnut. And that is internal tension of the wood. So when you got real curly figured grain, all those grain fibers are interlocked and twisted and it pulls the wood together giving it a lot of internal tension. I've noticed a lot, I'll go to cut a board of walnut and I'm running it through, running it through and then it starts getting a little bit more difficult to push through and that's when you get uh, some red flags going on. And then I've had it to where it pretty much stops. I can't push it and that is really scary. You don't expect it. You think you're just gonna run your piece through and be fine. So typically what I'm gonna do in that situation I will hold the piece very firmly. I won't be pushing forward on it because as of right now that blade is getting resistance from this wood and if I keep trying to push it I'm going to push my luck and it's probably going to kick back on me and that's terrifying and you could get hurt really bad. But how do you get the piece off of your table saw when it's stuck mid-cut? So what I do is usually I'm using like a push block or something because I wouldn't cut a piece like this thin with just my hand. So I'll hold it down firmly and I'll keep a firm grip on it. I'm not pushing it forward, I'm not pulling it back, I'm just keeping it steady where it's at. I'll shut my saw off, I'll let the blade come to a complete stop, and then after I do that, pull the piece off the saw. And what you'll notice when you pull it away is where that cut was, it'll immediately just snap back together. And that is because that grain was interlocked in wanting to hold together. So once it started getting cut, it's trying to pull back together and it's grabbing your saw blade, which puts you at a big risk of kickback. It's scary when that happens. I'm not 100% sure if holding it steady is the best thing to do, but it's the only thing I could think of doing is shutting that saw off right away and not trying to force it. Just to reiterate for you all from a different angle, pushing it through, push, 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 push. It stops, it's not wanting to go forward. You can't just pull it back because with that blade spinning, it'll probably want to throw it at you even more, but if you keep pushing it through, it's gonna probably kick back and you don't want to get conked on the, on the dome with walnut. Hold it very firmly, turn this off, wait for the blade to come to a complete stop, safely remove. Sometimes when the blade is stopped, it'll kind of hug the blade and you gotta tug it off. This saw is unplugged right now, so I'm not fooling around with the saw plugged in. Now if you don't have wood that is very figured at all, it's pretty straight grain, three quarter inch wood, I generally have a pretty easy time working it through the saw. And another thing is if you use a dull blade, walnut is pretty susceptible to burning. However, cutting walnut on a bandsaw is a pretty pleasant experience for the most part for me. I've never really had much difficulty cutting walnut on a bandsaw, getting nice curves in it. I've gotten a little bit of burning, but usually that's because of a dull blade. Walnut's pretty enjoyable on the bandsaw. Have fun cutting walnut on the bandsaw. And at least in my experience, walnut has been a joy to turn on a lathe. Once you get a block into round, you can increase that speed when you're ready to start making your shapes, and it just seems to just go so easy. Walnut, very fun to turn on a lathe. So walnut is a joy to sand as well. I think really the only enemy of walnut might be the table saw, and that's if you got really figured weird walnut, or really thick walnut. Since it's such a hard wood, if you get a nice clean cut on your table saw, it's already pretty nice and smooth, so I usually just hit it with some 120, and some 220, and then maybe some 320 depending on whether I'm doing an oil finish or not. It sands really smooth if you go up to like 320 and you do an oil finish or even a lacquer finish and smooth it out with some 320, you could get walnut feeling like glass and it looks amazing when it's done. Be sure to wear a respirator or a dust mask when you're sanding walnut. Don't want to breathe in any wood dust Walnut in particular could not be very good for you to breathe and I've heard of stories of when the fine dust settles on people's skin it can irritate their skin and even then is in small cases but better to be safe than sorry so always sand with a dust mask or a respirator when you're sanding any wood but especially do so with walnut. Now that we've gone over walnut a little bit and you got an idea of what it may be like to work with let's talk about 
what you might want to make with walnut. My project suggestions, I always put the disclaimer in every wood species video, I'm not saying that this is only what you could use walnut for, this is what you should use walnut for, or just some ideas of stuff you might want to make with walnut, or stuff I would make out of walnut. Walnut is always good in cutting boards, I've seen tons of walnut cutting boards. My end grain cutting board that I have is walnut mixed with some other woods. Walnut is a great choice of wood to mix with other woods. A lot of people really like walnut and maple because they're very contrasting woods. Maple's the lightest, walnut's the darkest. You put them together, really pretty combination. I personally prefer walnut and cherry together. Cherry's a little bit darker than maple, but it's lighter than walnut. It's not as stark of a contrast. It kind of is a little bit more mellow, and I kind of, I just prefer that a little bit better. Uh, you can make kitchen utensils out of it, spoons and little flippers and stirring utensils and stuff like that. Walnut is great for furniture. Like I said, my dining room table is cherry and walnut. I mean, it looks great as shelving. It's great for specialty items. If you just want to make little decorative things or little knickknacks made out of walnut, look great. You could use it for really anything and it's gonna look good. Now, we've talked about some ideas that you might want to use walnut for. Let's talk about how you want to finish walnut. That's a butterfly. I thought it was a hornet at first. Walnut is one of those woods that falls into a sweet spot of finishing because it really looks good with pretty much any finish you put on it. You could put Danish oil, mineral oil, uh, teak oil, lacquer, polyurethane, any of those look great on walnut and walnut will generally accept most of those finishes really well, really evenly and it'll look really, really good. There's another YouTuber that I follow, Dustin Penner, you might have heard of him. He once said that walnut is a very dreary wood until you apply a finish. And I see what he means because it'll go from just this dark brown to just a vibrant chocolate brown. And, the and this is one of the great things about working with walnut is you'll just see that beautiful grain just pops. So here it is with lacquer applied. And I'm just going to apply some teak oil to it. Now with both of these finishes, you're probably going to want to apply several coats, but that gives you the idea of how nice walnut can look. You really, it's a wood you can't go wrong with. Like I said, just be a little extra careful, a little extra wary when you're working with it, when you're cutting with it. I'm going to try to get to maple pretty soon too, because a lot of you have been wanting to see about maple. A little note on my previous one where I covered cherry, I had some people saying, you know, you didn't mention whether or not cherry burns, and you didn't mention what a good finish would be for cherry. It's in there. It's it's in the video. You can either skip ahead and find it or just watch the video. Anyway, I try to make sure that all of those things like burning and finishing, which is important for any project you're going to make, is covered in these videos. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Now that we've settled in our new place, I hope I could get around to some more because really after maples out of the way that kind of covers most of our basic domestics and we can start doing some fun stuff like exotic woods and stuff. You may be a first time viewer just wanting to know some stuff about walnut or different woods but I'll also have you know I have brand new woodworking projects where I build stuff every Friday so if you want to see that subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time.